This episode of the Power Ranking Show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for football, basketball, baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and the easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games that are available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. And that, of course, is the voice of at Marcus underscore Moshe. This is the Power Rankings podcast, a.k.a. the Power Ranking Show. I'm hoping I didn't say that too loud because every podcast the last few times when I say that first line is like, wow, it's like right in you guys' ears and then everything mellows out. So hopefully this is straight and good. Uh, I was trying to ask Marcus a little while ago, like if, if he had any like weird thanksgiving tradition my brother watches die hard on christmas eve like mm. with his wife because he thinks that's a christmas movie so do you have any do you watch planes trains and automobiles every thanksgiving do already watched it different we, my wife and uh, i always watch that about a week before thanksgiving hits but no it's it's usually just my brother and i sitting on the couch complaining about the cowboys offense after it scores zero points in the first half against the bad team well i actually have a little football tradition that i do uh i've been doing it every year I usually do it the night before Thanksgiving. I will go back and watch an old Thanksgiving game from like my childhood uh, or or maybe like my, you know, a little later than that, but just an older Thanksgiving game. And this year I started watching one on YouTube that I don't remember because it's too old for me. It's the 1981 Thanksgiving game. And I thought, well, I've never watched this. It's on YouTube. I'll put it on. And so it's the Bears and Cowboys. And it's, it's really interesting, man, because there's this young linebacker for the Bears who keeps making all these plays behind line of scrimmage. And you could tell that Summer and Madden don't really know much about this guy. And it's Mike Singletary. Mm. Nobody's a, he's a rookie and nobody knows him. And then the Bears are playing five defensive linemen heading up right on the offensive line. And John Madden talks about it a little bit, but they don't realize they're seeing the early formation of the 46 defense that buddy Ryan and the bears would win with Mike Dicka in 1985, but this is 1981. They're not any good. The bears are like three and nine. Oh my gosh. Walter Payton runs so hard, dude. He runs so hard. H- harder then, than uh, Isaiah Pacheco. Even harder than that. And that's saying something. Cause that guy, <laughs> that guy pumps his knees like 800 that times. That guy is they- angry at the ground. That's all I know. <laughs> he is. He is. Um, the other interesting game uh, d- thing about this game is Danny White eventually gets knocked out of the game and they have to bring in Glenn Carano. Glenn Carano is Gina Carano's uh, dad. Wasn't she like a female MMA fighter or something sure. like that? I have his rookie card. Oh. You have whose rookie card? The quarterback you're talking about. Never mind. It's just <laughs> I don't know. I, I have his USFL card. He played for the Pittsburgh Maulers. Yeah, they're know. back. Pittsburgh Maul- Maulers are good. Oh, they're one of the, so they're one of the, I always forget the eight teams or was it six yeah. or eight that they brought yeah. back and the Maulers are one of them. Um, yes. Yeah, so anyway, is kinda, coach. It, who is Ray Horton? Ah, oh, former Cowboys defensive back Ray mm-hmm. Horton. The last funny thing about this game though, real quick. Is it's the last year of Alan Page defensive tackle. He who's famous for playing with the Vikings, but he had been going to law school his last several years in the off season while he was playing. He's only like thirty seven years old in this game, but he looks like he's sixty. I mean, he has this giant gray beard. I mean, it's gray. Okay, yeah. like it's yeah. totally gray. And he would end up becoming a, a major major judge. Um, and so, anyway, it's just kind of interesting to watch this guy with a big gray beard. He's playing defensive tackle, dude, at about 230, which is hysterical. But he's making plays because he's quick. You know, he's quicker than the other guys. So, uh, reminded me a little bit of Strahan in his I'm last trying year. To, I'm trying Honestly, to think if you, were, if you were 230 pounds in the NFL today, what position are you playing? Because you're too big to play linebacker. You're, uh, you're too big to play corner, but you're, you're playing edge. You're playing edge. You're probably, I mean, you're probably, probably a probably situational on, pass rusher, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, it's, you know, I totally get it. I mean, he was late in his career and it kept his quickness, you know, and even look, even in the early eighties guys, two thirty was awfully light to be playing on the line, yeah. you know? So 
anyway, it was kind of interesting to watch that. I always try to do that. Maybe I'll watch one from the 2000s just to please you. Uh, 2001 you Creed. Know. That's the Creed halftime show. No, Absolutely no, amazing. Give me, give me a good one. What's a good one? How about 2010 against the Saints? That no, was an that's exciting a bad one. one. I did, we talked about that one today at Lot Todd Cowboys. How <laughs> oh, did I you? Still have, I still have bad memories about Roy Williams running in the open field. Oh, I know. It was a great game. Is there one from like 2002 to 2009 that you could think of that sticks out? Uh, there was one where um, uh, the, the Cowboys played the Bears on Thanksgiving. And uh, four. Drew, Drew, Drew Henson got the start in the game. Yeah. One is only start of his game, but it was really a big Julius Jones breakout game. Well, and I think Vinny Testaverde came in and finished yeah. that game. Yeah, yeah. but there People was a great – that was the first time where the Bears were in their orange yeah. unis. Uh um, well, it was Thomas I, Jones I, against Julius Jones. It was a good brother matchup. And wasn't that also the first time the Cowboys wore their throwbacks to 1960? The yeah. white helmet that you like? I'm yeah. pretty sure it was that game. But anyway, wait, look, we've got games from 2023 to get in. Let's start with Thanksgiving. I assume first up on the dock, it's got to be Green Bay at Detroit, right? Yeah, Green Bay at Detroit. Uh Detroit seven and a half point favorites. Yeah, so it's difficult to put Detroit as that heavy a favorite for me. I think I would take Green Bay to cover Detroit to win. I think Detroit can win by a touchdown. No problem. Green Bay was not impressive against the Chargers, even though they won. But you know what? The Lions weren't really impressive against the Bears either. Yeah. I think this will be a fiercely contested game. I'm taking Detroit to win and cover fairly easily. I, I just think they're going to be able to push around Green Bay quite a bit. They absolutely right. Yeah, they absolutely destroyed them in Green Bay earlier this year. I think the Lions are going to put on a show on Thanksgiving. I hope you're right. Believe me, I hope you're right. I just don't know that you are. Okay. There you go. Uh, next one, Washington Commanders at Dallas Cowboys. Now, we've seen this line move quite a bit throughout the week. It started at 10.5, went to 11, and then just this morning, it went from 11 to 12.5. It's ah. the third straight game that the Cowboys are double-digit favorites. I was literally going to tell you, but I let you finish. I go, it should be 12 and a half. And that's exactly what you ended up going to. I, um, I certainly not going to pick Washington to cover that. If you're going to bet on the spread, bet on Dallas. Um, Washington can throw the ball. I, but I just, I've seen too many home blowouts, uh, with the Cowboys. And if things get away from Washington, I know you're taking the commanders to cover. I can already well, predict. Dallas is one in 12 against the spread on Thanksgiving in their last 13 games. They are pretty bad at covering the spreads. Even worse, they're just terrible at offense. They're averaging, averaging four and a half points per first half in the last 10 years. Like they just get off to really slow starts. Those trends cover multiple head coaches. They do, uh, but it, it's just for whatever reason, the Cowboys always sleepwalk a little bit in the first half of these games. So you're going to take commanders to cover? Yes. All right, let's talk over under on this game. 48 and a half. Mm. That's pretty high. It is. It's a little high. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to have to say, don't bet on that either. I don't know that I like betting on this game whatsoever. How about you just enjoy this game and pick the Cowboys to win yeah. in your family league. It, enjoy Dolly Parton at halftime. I can't yeah. wait to see what song she does. There you go. I'm, I'm walking away. Are you, would you bet on the commanders on this yeah. game or would you walk away? I mean, would I, I already have. So yes, I would. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, 49ers at Seahawks is our nightcap. The 49ers seven and a half point road favorites. I think that's a little high. You know how much I like the 49ers, but I think that's high. Uh, let's talk total on this one because I, I to me, at least if, if you're going to bet on this game, you're betting that the 49ers are going to look good a third week in a row against a division opponent on the road on a short week where your schedule's all thrown off. Um, I, you know, I'm not saying the 49ers aren't going to win, but what if Brock Purdy gets off to a rough start, that crowd gets involved? Uh, the, the question is Seattle quarterback, Geno Smith uh, banged up his tricep, I believe it was, against bicep. the Rams. It looked bicep. it was bicep, excuse me. Um, if he's a little off, then yeah, I would take the 49ers for sure. But how are we going to know that? I'm going to take the 49ers to win and cover. I, I just don't see Seattle's offense, especially without Kenneth Walker this week, being able to have a lot of success. I think the 49ers win 31 to 13, something like that. Uh, there's tomorrow. another one. I hope you're right. That's a risky call to me. But what's the total on this? 44. Oh, golly, that's a tough one, too. Boy, I hate to keep saying walk away, but I don't like any of these. I don't, I don't I just, like either one I just one realized of these. that my score prediction, 31-13, puts us right at 44, which would be a stay away. 
Right. And, and I, look, the reason I don't like this game, the reason I don't like the Dallas game is the Cowboys blow out everybody. But I agree with you. I know how they played on Thanksgiving. And so that's a really tough one. And Washington also looked awful last week. Yep. And then on the flip side, I don't like the 49ers Seahawks one because I don't know the state of Geno Smith. And I always say, if you don't know the state of one of the starting quarterbacks, you can't afford to bet on it. You just yep. can't. I'm picking the 49ers straight up. All right, Go next ahead. game, our super duper uh, Black Friday special game between oh, the Miami God. Dolphins God. and the New York Jets. Uh, by the way, Amazon doing some pretty cool things with this game on Black Friday. Great. They're going to be showing special deals that pop up on the TV Great. depending on the audience. So I'm if so you have excited. some younger kids, you're going to have a QR code so you can go buy some stuff. Uh, Dolphins, Great. nine and a half. Go get days. yourself a Monchi G. I have no idea what that is. I know it's, it's an old toy. Use some Lincoln logs. All right, go ahead. Lincoln logs. Oh, I said Monchichi. You went back to the seventies with Lincoln logs. My gosh, Monchichi was at least the eighties, like late eighties. Yeah, the li Lincoln logs didn't come to the Mosier household till the early two thousands. So yeah, I see. I see. All right. So what do we got? What's our what's our uh, nine and a half what's going Miami. on here? Nine and a half Miami with Tim Boyle starting. Uh, this game is in Miami. Yes, it's New York. No, it's New York. Um, Golly, I hate all these. I hate them all. I <laughs> too. I hate them all. Um, because there again, I, I have no idea what Tim Boyle is going to give you, but the Jets are at home. I think the Jets are going to get a lift, honestly, from him playing. I think their defense will play much better football, but how do they match up against Miami on offense versus the Dolphins defense right now does not look good, especially with Jalen Ramsey playing well. Yeah. I'm going to lean with you. I'm going to go with the Jets. I'll, I'll say they they cover the spread, but it's like a 20 to 13 type of game. But that's just that's a lot of points. Yeah, the total on this one 41. Yeah, I'd I'd be more inclined to go under that, Marcus. Yeah, I would as well. Yeah, I think I like that. I like that better than the other two games that we talked about. Okay. Yeah. Next up, uh, three all games. Right. We're back to the Sunday schedule. Actually, some really good games on Sunday starting with this one. The Jacksonville Jaguars uh, at Houston Texans. The Jags are one and a half point favorites. I'm going to take Houston there. I'll take Houston at home. Obviously, they'll cover. I know you're taking the Jags. I am. Uh, yeah, I know you are. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to put a little bit of faith in that Houston offense. And to be honest with you, it, you know, maybe this is a game Jacksonville goes in and makes a statement. And hey, that's great. Prove it. Go prove it. Because right now, the Jags' offense, Marcus, if if Stroud you know, makes mistakes like last week, fine, Jacksonville wins. But if Houston starts getting in a little bit of a track meet, I haven't seen enough from the Jags offense to make me think they can keep up. I just think Jacksonville's defense, especially up front in their front six, I were used to saying front seven, but their front six, I think is going to be able to contain them a little bit. I like Jacksonville to, to bounce back and get a win here. At Houston. At Houston. Okay, we'll see. All right, next one. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers at Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, the Steelers are one point favorites on the road. Okay. I'll take Pittsburgh to cover this all day. That defense, those pass rushers against yeah. the Bengals offensive line. That's been okay. Uh, against a backup quarterback. Now I told you usually guys, I, if we don't know what to expect, but I know what I saw from Browning last week and the, you know, the Bengals receivers have been banged up. T Higgins has been banged up. Jamar chase has been playing banged up. And, you know, Joe Mixon is a fine back. Do I think Joe Mixon is the kind of player that's going to be able to mitigate all these offensive problems for the Bengals? I don't. No. Not against Pittsburgh's defense. It's going to be Pittsburgh all day. In fact, I like this one the best out of anything we've talked about, and this better be a low total as well. 34 and a half. Oh, God. I mean, that's really hard to go under that. Well, remember last week, Brown Steelers, it was 32 and a half when we were joking. Like, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the final score ended up being 10 to 13. We didn't even get close to that total, right? You uh, want to go I under? Yeah, I do because I think okay, I think Cincinnati is going to have a hard time scoring a touchdown in yeah. this game. Yeah, no, I'm 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 down with you. You like Pittsburgh to cover though, I assume. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, that might be the lock of the week, Mosher. Yeah. yeah, maybe. All right, so we've we've talked about a couple of big games. That Jacksonville Houston one is big. That game for Pittsburgh is obviously big. An sure. underrated sneaky big game this week: Saints at Falcons, and this is a pick 'em. Who's playing quarterback? That's really Does the question matter? on both sides. Well, Desmond Ritter is starting for Atlanta. We do know that. Okay. Okay. Oof. Okay. First of all, 
you know how I love your line that you have to be a degenerate to game well in this game. I think this definitely falls in that category no, for me. No. Come on. If I get a chance to bet on Jameis, I'm doing it all day long. I would take the saints personally. I'm, there's no way I would, no way I would bet. I wouldn't even bet $5 on this game. Go buy yourself a pack of we, peanut M&Ms. Hold on. Hold on. We've got another game coming up that is the ultimate. If you're betting on this game, you're a degenerate. That's this is not one. This is one that actually has big playoff implications. So the, the problem with look, the, here's the issue to me for Atlanta, and then I don't want to talk about this game anymore because it totally stinks. Uh, if Jameis Winston gets hot, which he can at times, he's always been a pretty streaky player. And and this is not the same guy that threw thirty something interceptions for Tampa. He's not that careless with the no. football, at least not since I've seen him play since that time. If he plays pretty well, can Atlanta's pass offense stay with him? I'm not saying the Saints are going to put up 34. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, Desmond Ritter has shown little signs here and there, and I know you didn't agree with his benching, but it wasn't because he was playing great that you thought he shouldn't be benched. You just thought Atlanta should evaluate him. Yes? Yep. Yeah, and okay. we already know what Taylor Heineke is. And as yes. we've seen, it took, what, two games before the Falcons went back to Desmond Ritter? Um I, I yeah, like if you're going to evaluate no. another quarterback, like you're not evaluating Taylor Heineke. If you're no. evaluating another quarterback and that's why you're playing him over Ritter, I'm fine with that. But I, Atlanta still has a shot at the South. <laughs> I know. And, and if they win this game, they're in fantastic position because our next game is the Buccaneers at the Colts. Colts two and a half point favorites. God, this is another tough game to call. Another big one think, though, because the Colts are yes. five and five. You win this game, you're six and five. You're right in the thick of things in the AFC. And I'm going with the Colts here. Uh, you know, the Bucks, I think they have the best chance to win the South, as do you. But this is in Indianapolis. Uh, Tampa Bay, uh, to quote you, has a tendency to play with their food. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they need to get big plays to get back in the game. I, I just I think at home, I've the Colts have actually, in a weird way, been kind of consistent. They've been consistently like a five and five team. So I like them at home in this one. Yeah. To um, just play I, a standard, decent game and win it. I'm taking Tampa Bay. I like what I saw from Baker Mayfield last week. Mike Evans it's dropped fine. a sure touchdown. Um, going up against the Colts, who just recently waived Darius Shaq Leonard. Um, I, I think the Bucs are going to pull this one off. The problem for me with Tampa is they're just too doggone inconsistent. They are. Are. And so, I, uh, you know, but this game could really go either way. This is wh what's the Colts are favorite. I'm surprised this isn't a Col pick them Colts two and a half. Yep. Look, if you want to take Tampa to cover, I, I, I guess that's probably the best bet here. Two and a half is always like a weird, weird one to me, yeah. you know, uh, but either way, I like the Colts to win this game, but this is not one. If we're talking about betting money, this is another one. I'm like, nope. See you later. All right. Our next two games are quite something. The New England Patriots at the New York Giants. Patriots, three and a half point road favorites. <laughs> this is a huge game, and I'm not even exaggerating because the loser of this game is, is going to have, I believe, the number two pick in the draft and a whole bunch of tiebreakers. Big one. So I already know what all the announcers are going to talk about. Bill Belichick versus, you know, young quarterback, some kind of data they're going to pull out that goes back to 2002. And that's just not the case right now because you got to have the horses to be able to do that. And if you've watched the Patriots this year, it's been really bad. Like re they've had some games that have been really, really bad. Now, do I think Tommy DeVito is great shakes? No. And does it concern me, his offensive line? Yeah, they gave up like nine sacks last week. But they won. So, and but the Giants still won. The Patriots are favored by three and a half. Yes, on the give road. me the Giants to cover that. What I don't know. Game. What do you think about when who wins? I, I'm going to take the Patriots to win outright and cover and cover. Okay, I'm going to take the Patriots to win. The Giants to cover. It's going to be a field goal game. It's three and a half, right? Yeah. By the way, our total is 33 and a half for this game. I know. I was just about to say the total for this at best. I really, I thought this game would be 17, 16 at best. Yeah. At absolute best, which is still under 33 and a half. So take the under. Let, let's fly through this next one. Panthers yeah. at Titans, a match of some rookie quarterbacks. Titans three and a half point home favorites. I'll go with that. I will go with the Titans at home to run the rock on the Panthers. 
Uh, the Panthers can't protect. Yeah, that I'll, I'll take the. T- I'm I taking hate the three and a half though. I know you I, are. Panthers beat CJ Stroud. They're pretty good when they have another rookie quarterback on the other side of the field. I'm okay, taking we'll the, the Panthers to win outright. Uh, next one: Rams at Cardinals. This is also a pick. I mean, I hate these picks this week. I hate them all. Uh, I think this might be the game the Cardinals get off the schneid. You know, I I like the Rams. I like the way they've played for the most part, but the Cardinals are at home. Give the Cardinals a home win here. I'm going Rams. Rams. Yeah, I'm going to take the Rams here. I think Matt Stafford, even without Cooper Cup, is going to be able to generate enough offense to win. I think you're just waiting to see what I pick and then going against it. Yeah. Uh, Now, this is fully an Elliott Harrison special. We've got the Cleveland Browns at the Denver Broncos. His Denver Broncos, Broncos favored by one and a half at home. Taking the Browns. Taking the Browns to win and cover. Or, or, I mean, the Browns are the underdogs here. Yeah. The Broncos have been doing this with smoke and mirrors. The Browns got nothing out of their quarterback last week. They get a little bit this week, and that defense plays well. Forget it. Game's up. Taking the Broncos to win and cover. No, you are. Yeah, Yeah, a mile high. Uh, Give me one defense- reason the Broncos are good. T- t- tell me, I, I want to know matchup wise where they win, please. Uh, they're resilient, Elliot. Yeah, you're just taking them. That's it. <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> it's that you're playing a rookie quarterback who's going to be playing on the road in Mile High. Like he's probably going to be sailing the ball all over the field. So Fine. taking the Broncos, let him run, have- play your defense. The Broncos' offense won't be able to move the ball on you anyway. 35 the Broncos make total, their own mistakes. 35 is the total And for it's going to be under. And it's going to be under. Uh, Forget the game. Forget the game, everybody. Take the under on 35. That's too high for this game. Seriously. That might, uh, might, that might be my lock of the week right okay. there. Broncos, uh, Browns, under. Next one. Chiefs, Raiders. Chiefs, eight and a half point favorites. Is this game in KC? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. I don't know, Marcus. That offense for Kansas City has been looking so bad. Then again, I don't know. They maybe have a real rebound game. I know you cover the Raiders. How are you looking at this game? Because I know you don't have a lot of faith in the Raiders personnel, but you're the one that's been telling me the Chiefs offense is doomed to failure. So my son was born in October, and I believe the Chiefs have scored six points in the second half since he's been born. It's pretty bad. It's really strong analysis. <laughs> So you don't think uh, to just go against the grain on my pick. Uh, I'm taking yeah, the Chiefs pick. here to win and cover. Because even if the Chiefs struggle in offense, I can't imagine the Raiders scoring more than 13 points in this game. Kansas City's defense is playing really well. Yeah. I think the that's Chiefs what win. worries me. I think the Chiefs win like 23 to 10. What worries me is another like slot blitz like they did with McDuffie last week on uh, Jalen Hurts. And that ball doesn't just pop right back up into Aiden O'Connell's hands. You know what I mean? Boom. Quick touchdown. Yeah. Um, I'm with you, Kansas City. All right, next one. Buffalo at Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a three-point favorite. Boy, wouldn't this be just so Bills to go in there and win this game and then drop a home game versus, you know. Can, can I give you a real quick yeah. update on Buffalo's secondary? Teron Johnson, their slot corner who's been awesome, out with a concussion. Uh, there's two safeties, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, both dealing with injuries right now. Dane Jackson, one of their starting corners, he's also dealing with concussion, not likely to play. Going up against Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, who, by the way, those guys should be pretty fired up for this game because they had a hard time getting them the ball. Yeah. And Casey, they finally got Devontae Smith the ball in that that fly route, um, you know, close to the goal line, the one that hurts under through. I tell you what. I'm going to take Philadelphia, but I have just one little caveat that really has nothing to do with the pick. Nick Sirianni and company have got to push the ball. Push the ball. Take some shots. You you and I have talked about this many times on this podcast. Take a deep shot and let the Bills know, whether it's your banged up safeties or their backups, you're going to have to play the whole field today. We're not just going to throw the ball at the line of scrimmage. If the Eagles do that and let Hurts air it out, I don't care if he throws a deep interception. Who cares? Let your defense play ball. Give me the Eagles. Taking Philly 33-21. I think they beat Buffalo by double uh, double digits in week 12. Uh, All right. Sunday night football. Ravens at Chargers. Elliot just loves watching the Ravens play football. Ravens, three and a half point favorites again. I'll take the Ravens to win by four in this. I will. Um, 
the Chargers are so dysfunctional right now. Normally, in this situation, I would always take the Chargers. I would take the home team because it's three and a half. But Marcus, after watching Brandon Staley deal with the media and the way that team's playing, and Joey Bosa's got a bad foot, um, you know, and Khalil Mack, I know Khalil Mack has the big sack numbers, but if you watch them this year, there are games where it isn't there at all. Yeah. Uh, it's like he gets them in bunches. And I don't know that the Ravens are really going to give him that opportunity to get sacks and bunches. Give me the Ravens on the road as much as I hate it. I'm taking the Chargers to cover. I know you are. Game. Yeah, uh, Mark Andrews out with a foot injury. I think it's going to take the Ravens a little bit to get used to playing offense without him. I also think this might be like Brandon Staley's last stand. It's a home game. You're four and six. If you lose this game, he might be out and be fired. I think the Chargers are going to have a nice game here. I'm I'm gonna quit making the first pick because every time I make the first pick, you deliberately pick the other right, one. Yeah, I got the next one. Yeah. I got the next one. Yeah. Uh Monday night football, Bears at Vikings. The Vikings are three and a half point favorites, and I'm taking the Bears to cover that spread. Yeah, I would too. I would too. Because uh number one, I saw a lot from the Bears last week. Uh their defense created turnovers against the Lions. Uh Justin Fields is a major upgrade for them now at quarterback. And I don't think Dobbs was bad against the Broncos. I don't, but at some point the game might be a little up there too. I'm not saying the guy's bad. I just think he's made some plays where you kind of shake your head and say, well, he got away with one. I don't know that he's going to be able to do that in this division matchup. And why should the Vikings be favored by three and a half? Also, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. So yeah, give me the Fields Bears on good. that. Yeah, Fields look good. I think I'll take the Bears to win that outright, to be honest. Okay. Uh, I, I won't go that far. I'm just going to take the Bears to cover the spread. Okay. So we'll let's run through these games really quickly. Yeah. Packers, Lions. We both like the Lions to win. Uh, I like the Lions to cover that spread with ease. Washington, Dallas. You like Dallas to win and cover. I like Dallas to win, but Washington to cover. 49ers, I don't like that game at all. How about that? I don't care yeah. about who covers. Yeah, go ahead. 49ers, Seahawks. I like the Niners Ditto. to win and cover. You don't want to bet on that game, but you would take no. the 49ers to win. Yep. Dolphins, Jets. We both like the Dolphins to win. I like the Jets to cover. I think so they're staying. I. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll Jags, take the Jets to cover. Yeah. Jags, Texans. I'm taking the Jags. You're taking the Texans. Steelers, mm -hmm. Bengals is one of our locks of the week. Take the Steelers to win and cover. Saints, Falcons. I'm taking the Saints to win uh, yeah. and cover. I believe you are as well. Yeah, but again, if you're betting on this game, it's like yeah. seriously. Yeah. Uh, Go play Stratego. Bucks, Colts. I like the Colts. Or excuse me. I like the Bucks to win and cover. You like the Colts to win. Correct. Uh, pro probably cover, but we'll see. Patriots, Giants. I like the Patriots to win in cover. You are saying stay away from this game because you are degenerate if you bet on it. Yeah, Correct? Giants to cover, though. Yeah. Panthers, Titans. I like the Panthers. You like the Titans. Rams, Cardinals. I like the Rams. You like the Cardinals. Browns, Broncos. I like the Broncos. You like the Browns. Chiefs, Raiders. We both like the Chiefs to win in cover. Bills, Eagles. We both like the Eagles to win. Maybe stay away from that spread. I've got no problem at all betting Eagles minus three. Ravens, Chargers. I'm taking the Chargers to cover that spread. You are taking the Ravens to cover and to win. Bears, Vikings. We both like the Bears to cover. You like the Bears to win. I, I'm not quite there with you, but that's where we're at. What was it? You said I liked the Cardinals. And saying I like the Cardinals in a sentence is really You like the Cardinals to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, yeah, I think the ones that I like the best, uh, there was an under in there. Oh, the Broncos, Browns, under, I like a lot. 35. I like the Steelers uh, to win. So those are two that I really like. Any issue with those two? I assume not. I know you like the Steelers. Yeah, of course. Did the Browns and Broncos even get to 20? <laughs> uh, I, I think we get Maybe like so. a, I think we get a 17-13 game. Fine, 30, you're still safe, right? Because it's 35. You're still yeah. five points we have two, under. So. You still can get two more safeties and be just fine. Yeah. All right. Your final thought for uh Turkey day. Yeah. Or make sure that you don't overload on the bread and the mashed potatoes at the beginning of the meal. Those are just things that fill you up. You want to save room for the pie that comes after dessert or at halftime when you're watching Dolly Parton perform at at and stadium. I highly recommend apple pie. It's a personal favorite of mine. Pumpkin pie is okay. Only if you have whipped cream, but it goes apple pie, pecan pie, pumpkin pie, that order. All right. And we'll talk planes, trains, and automobiles on Monday in the Power Ranking Show. But for now, he covers their Cowboys for Locked On Cowboys with Landon McCool. Give Landon a follow. Also does a Dynasty podcast on the same network. Covers the Raiders for USA Today, Raiders Wire, and writes for the 33rd team. He's at Marcus underscore Mosher on Twitter. And we really appreciate you guys. And we will talk to you soon. Take care. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye-bye.